Hey guys, Malcolm Moore here. Thank you for joining me. And if you've been following my channel recently, you may have noticed that I've been riding with these bindings. These are the soon to be released Nidecker Supermatics. And as you'll see right now, they're a pretty cool step through, step on, step in, whatever you want to call them, binding that allows for mega easy and quick access just like that. Now, these bindings, they've been, been in development for about four years now, and there's been quite a lot of hype surrounding them. And I got sent them about six weeks ago, and I didn't want to just bosh out a quick review. I wanted to really put them through the ringer, put them through their paces, and see how they held up, so I could share with you guys how good they are, what my thoughts are on them, and how they compare to the competition, whether that be of the step-in variety or also just against a normal binding because you're gonna to wanna to see how they perform as well. So, as you can just see, I've quickly popped my back foot out there. I've spotted a little side hit down here, skate up to it, open up the back, slide my foot in, ready to go if this guy allows me. <laughs> cool. Woo. So as you can see, it is super, super easy to do that. But they also function like a regular binding as well. You may have noticed they've got straps over the top for those situations where you might be on a steep slope or something like that and you can't. Woo get that pressure to, put, to push down on them on somewhere flat. And because I've been using these for the last six weeks, I've used them across the whole mountain in a whole bunch of different scenarios. Whether it's like right now, where we're just cruising through some very slushy snow. I spent days where I've been on the beginner slopes, going up and down on the pommel lifts on the magic carpet, taking my bindings on and off all day long. I spent days where I've been riding steeper black runs, getting on ch off chairlifts where it's steep at the top to see how they really cope. I've had hard pack groomer days and I've had deep powder days as well. I've really tried these bindings in all conditions. I really wanted to put a fair test on them because one of the big questions you're gonna have with a binding like this that has these extra moving parts is well, how durable is it? I'm sure it's gonna work for a day, for a week, but I've really been using them six or seven hours every day, as I mentioned, for the last woo, six weeks. And guys, before you comment, before you ask me, where is my selfie stick? I'm using the Insta360 one X2 camera here and I'll put a little link up to the video review I made of this camera last week and I'll also put that down in the description below so check that one out after you've watched this. So before we get into it let me just start with a quick disclaimer. Nidecca did send me these bindings for free but I'm not under any contract and I can say whatever I want about them so everything in this review is my own and my honest opinion. So, now let's get into when you get these bindings out of the box, how you set them up. And really, it's just like a normal binding. I did, in fact, make a whole unboxing video, but it was really a half hour snooze fest. So, all pretty stealthy. Drop in technology, that's what they call it. Says it right there in the box. So it's like step in, step on. Automatic, universal, dual entry, drop in technology. That's the marketing spiel. A little, a little letter. It's like I've been invited to some eyes wide shut style ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know what you think, but I don't think I'm gonna post that one. And as I mentioned, they're just like a normal binding. So you obviously have your discs under here, you put them on at your desired angles and you're good to go. And at the moment, as you can see, I've got the straps open. And the first time you use them, you just want to put your foot in as normal 
you're just going to kneel down behind it and you're going to tighten them up as you would any usual binding. You can see I've got the ankle strap at the back there and the toe strap just going over the, over the top here, which meshes around any boot really nicely thanks to this kind of soft rubbery webbing. And on that note, I'm not actually in Nidecker boots here. I'm in my Burton iron boots and that's a really big plus about these bindings. You're not forced to use any specific boot. You can chop and change your boots as you like and they'll work with these. Now you can also see this kind of middle strap over here. It's not really that tight. And to be honest, when you're in, it doesn't really do anything. But if we look at over this one here that I've already got set up, you can see what that does. It just allows these bindings to stay kind of locked in that place, which is gonna be important later when we come to the step-in function. So the one thing now that is a little bit more unique about these, you can see there's a small button here just on the ratchets. And once you're locked in, once you've got them as tight as you wish, you just press that button down and that's gonna lock them in place. They're not gonna move anywhere. If you do want to undo your straps, you just release that button and it just comes off as a normal binding would. So let me just crank that down again because what you're gonna to wanna to see now is the step in, step out function. So, standing up, if I just push down on this lever here, it's gonna release my heel, just like that, and my foot is gonna slide out easy. The high back has pulled back and you can see there's this kind of weird stirrup or heel hammock type thing that just hangs here. And what that does, it allows you, when you put your foot back in, it's gonna press down and that's what's gonna lock it into place. You can see I've done it with my hand there, release the binding, and now you'll see I'll do it with my foot. It just slides in nice and easy like that. I'll show you from this side, just release it with my foot, pull it out, slide it in. Now there's a couple of other cool things that make that work really well too. So if I release this one, obviously I mentioned this heel hammock. On the front of the binding here, you can see this shiny part. It's kind of like what I call a skid plate. And it really allows you, when your foot goes down and in, it allows it just to slide in to the front. The other quite nice thing about this is when you've got that kind of wet, heavy snow that sometimes can stick to your binding, it really doesn't stick to this skid plate. And when I've been using these in powder, that's often a problem with normal bindings. You know, when you've got that clumpy, wet snow, it really builds up under your boot and you get that kind of half centimeter or so of ice. With these, added little bonus, that didn't happen. So you've got that skid plate, which allows your foot to slide in. You've got this heel hammock. And the final thing, is this little roller here. There's a bit of a wheel right at the bottom of the high back that when your boot presses down into it, it just helps that slide and it really makes it super, super easy. Let me just show you again. Whoop. Both feet in. So that's both feet in. Obviously on the flat, it's dead easy just to release, pull out, put back in, super easy. So how do these bindings compare to some of the other bindings on the market? And let's start with the flow binding because that's where most comparisons are gonna be made. Because let's be honest, it looks like a kind of similar system where you kind of shove your foot in from the back. But the difference between these and the flow bindings is that the flow bindings, you really do slide your foot in right from the back. Whereas these, it comes in much more from above. You know, on the flows, you don't have this big heel cup at the back, which is quite nice as well, because this makes it feel much more like a normal binding. And because of the things like the skid plate and the wheel, I've seen people really having to kind of work hard to shove their feet in on the flows, whereas these, it is so, so much easier. I actually used to have a pair of flows quite a few years ago, and it's a completely different game with these, much easier. So, once my foot's in, as I mentioned, pretty simple. The next thing is how they release. And this is true of any step on, step in, binding, whatever. To release your foot when you have both feet in, you're gonna have to get your hand down here. So I'm just gonna use my thumb, press that release to pull the back foot out. With the flows, you have to pull that lever at the back. You have to do something similar with the clue bindings. 
we'll come on to them later. And the Burton step-ons as well, you have to also release a button to allow your foot to come out. But what's quite cool and unique about these ones is that once your back foot is out, you can simply release the front foot just with your back foot there. You simply press your foot down on that button and your front foot is out, which does actually make quite a big difference because a lot of the time when you're getting off chair lifts, when you're using button lifts, things like that, you only need to pull out your back foot. You might be skating from A to B, but then you say you need to quickly jump on a gondola, boom, foot comes out, just like that, off I go. And you might have noticed just there that once I took my foot out, I just kind of clamped that high back back down. So let me show you that. And that is just to stop this bit hanging out over the back of the binding, just kind of stopping it from being loose. Once it's out, you just nudge it down like that and you could hear that it clicks in. And that's gonna bring me onto the locking mechanism. So you can see on the side here, one there, same on the other side here, this is the part that locks in to the ratchet on the inside of the binding there. And it seems to have a few clicks. If you get it in once, there we go very gently. I think I had two clicks there. You know, as soon as you get it in, it's locked. But once you put down the full pressure of your foot, it's gonna fully lock in right to the bottom. This heel hammock here, when your foot is on that, that is not gonna move. I really have to kind of yank it out to get it to move. Once your foot is pushed down on that, that is locked in place. It's quite comfy actually. It's nice and squidgy, good bit of cushioning there. And then yeah, it really does just feel like a normal binding. On the back here, you can adjust your forward lean, pull that up and down as you would on a normal binding. That's just gonna allow you to tilt that high back forward at a more aggressive angle. And that's one of my first impressions of this binding. Once you're in, which is so easy to do, this really feels like any other binding because you've got your normal boots on and you've got these two straps, which you can tighten or loosen as much as you want. You know, say I was going off free riding, I wanted them cranked down quite tight for that more responsive feel. I could do that in the morning and then I could just slide in and out all day as I lap the chairs. Or say I'm in the park and I wanted a slightly more looser, more surfy feel to allow me to do some tweaks. I could set that up in the morning and then yeah, same thing on and off the chairlift. I know each run is gonna feel exactly the same. So what's on next? Let's do a quick test. I know some of you are gonna ask, even though it's probably not something you'll do that often, can you get these on and off on the move without even having to stop? Okay, I'm gonna do this because I know a bunch of you are gonna ask, can I get him in and out whilst I'm on the move? So, open that up. Woo! -hoo. Yeah, hey, hey, look at that. I am in. All right, let's see if we can do it back out and in again. So, on the move, release the back, foot comes out. Let's clamp that high back down so it doesn't move. Woo! I'm gonna come around this corner with one foot in. All right, let me get around here. I'm gonna release that clamp again. Whoop, around the corner. Release that back clamp. There it is, it's opened up. Oh my God, this is so bumpy and slushy. And now, once again, let's give it a go. Foot goes in, locks down. Is it coming out? Nope, that is well and truly in. <laughs> so, yeah, if you really want to, you can get them in and out without having to come to a stop. But that was my first time doing it because is it really something you need to do very often? I don't think so. More than likely, you're gonna come to a little stop when you get off the chairlift. You're gonna put them in. Obviously mine was already in. Like that, off you go. No time wasted. <sighs> Now one of the occasions where you want this step in function to work is a situation like this where you've just come off a chairlift and there's a bit of a slope. So I just pull that back, click my foot in, dead easy. And this is where I think this binding has more of an advantage over the other step in bindings, the Burton, the Clue or the Flow. Both the Burton and the Clue require you to stamp down a little bit more. You need to be directly over the top. 
The flow binding is much more from the back, which kind of kicks the board out a little bit. But this has kind of got that perfect 45 degree angle where if you're on a bit of a slope, it's still quite easy to do. And I would say that, honestly, I'd say about 99.9% .9 of the time I've been using this binding, getting in and out with the step through function, with that kind of step in. It's only been the very rare occasion where I might have got off a chairlift. It's been really, really steep, quite icy, and I've been struggling to balance. That's when I might have sat down and just kind of used the straps as you would with a regular binding. So now let's come to getting the binding off when you're still on a slope. And on the slope here, I'm a little bit on my heel edge. I'm just gonna release the back foot and you can get it out there, but that's probably the most tricky scenario because you release with your heel first, you lift your heel up. If you're on your heel edge, it's a little bit more tricky to kind of release that pressure. But let me just pop back in and spin around and show you the same thing on my toe edge. So, I'm on my toe edge, balancing here. Once again, I can push there. And in that scenario, it's much, much easier because obviously, as I have pressure on my toes, I just lift my heel up, it's gonna pop out the binding. Easy peasy, I'm out. And don't be fooled into thinking, these are a binding just for beginners. This is some really chopped up, was slushy about 20 minutes ago. It's now starting to refreeze, really kind of clumpy, tricky snow to blast through. And yeah, these bindings, they have no problems with it at all. They're responsive, you can put it on edge, get into some calves. And yeah, that's why I've been happy using them for the last six weeks. Now coming on to my final thoughts, after six weeks of riding non-stop with these Nidecker Supermatic bindings, I believe one of the key questions when you're looking at a step on binding, whatever brand it is, you're expecting to lose something. You know, you gain the added functionality of being able to step in and step out, not having to do the straps up. So surely you're gonna lose something else. And I really thought I'd find that quickly with these bindings. I thought they're either gonna break, you know, they've got these moving parts, or they're not gonna feel like a normal binding, or they're gonna feel really heavy and clumpy. But really, I mean, yeah, there probably is a slight bit of added weight, but it's not something you notice. It's probably like having a little bit of loose change in your pocket. And that's the best thing about these. You don't lose anything from a normal binding. They work just as well as any regular binding would. You know, they're not the stiffest binding on the market. The high back, it's got a nice bit of flex to it. So if you're looking for that mega, mega stiff binding, these probably aren't gonna be the ones for you. But that's also something that could well come in the future with these. You might be able to get a stiffer version of this. Right now, I'd say this is something pretty middle of the road, similar to your Burton cartels. But it really has huge advantages over some of the other bindings. So the flow bindings, this is just a much better design. It's so much easier in and out. So it beats them hands down. The Burton step-ons, I also believe it beats. One, you get the ability to use whatever boot you want. You're not confined to having boots with that kind of stepping clips on the side. And just again, the fact that you have the feel of a regular two-strap binding. I haven't ridden the Burton step-ons much, and I know some people love them, and they do work. But it's a very different feeling you have. And whichever boot you buy, that's kind of dictates the stiffness and the response you're gonna get from the binding. You know, that's how much flex you have at the front of the boot. Whereas these, you have that much more natural, lateral side-to-side -side flex as well, which allows you to have that more surfy feeling, allows you to tweak things out in the park. And, you know, it's just what we're used to in a normal binding. I've got to stop saying that, I'm sounding like a broken record. But that's really their big advantage. So I know some of you are gonna ask me about Clue bindings. And Clue actually did offer to send me a pair of their bindings. And I had a few reservations about them. I mean, one, like <laughs> you've got a high back on the back of your boot when you're getting on and off the lift, which I just thought looked off. But I had a few other reservations as well, and I told them about these. And basically when they heard what I said, they didn't want to send me the bindings. So what can I say? I haven't ridden those ones, but 
they didn't want me to give them a negative review. But in my opinion, like you've got a high back on the back of your leg, it just looks daft. And I know most of the time it's only when you take your back foot out and you're on the lift, no one's really gonna notice, but say you're getting on a gondola, you take both feet out, you don't wanna walk around with high backs, you're gonna look stupid. And in that case, you're then just gonna unstrap them and use them as a regular binding anyway, which you can do with these ones, which actually brings me back to the Burton step-ons. Now, I know they say they're never gonna fall off and I'm sure they never will, but still what comes with the step-ons, which you won't see in most of the fancy adverts, is that they have a little leash on the front binding that you connect to the boot so that when your back foot is out, when you're on a chairlift, just in case that front foot does come unclipped, that little leash is gonna stop the board from falling. With these, you don't have that problem because your front foot is clearly in, it's not gonna come out. But the thing is, because of that little leash, when I've been teaching people that have them, when we're going on chairlifts and stuff, that's fine. But if you live somewhere where there's a few gondolas, when they're like, right, time to get off, time to go on the gondola, take both feet out, unclip the front one, and then they're like, oh, hold on, I've got this little leash here. And that's just a little added annoyance. And, you know, I'm not saying they're ever gonna fall off, but they put that leash there for a reason, and it's something you don't have with these ones. So, bottom line, these bindings work super well. They're so easy to set up, so easy to use. You can use them with any boot. They have all the functions of a regular binding, like your forward lean, the two straps. They just work really well. I didn't think I was gonna be convinced by them. I thought, oh, I don't really have an issue with strapping in and strapping out. But it's so fun, it is so easy, and it is really fun to annoy your mates and just be like, come on, are you coming? Or off the lift. Guys, you're not in yet. It is so easy. And there's been little scenarios where, for instance, when I get home, I get off a gondola and there's about a patch of snow that's 100 meters long. And normally I'm carrying my helmet, my bag, if I've been filming. I wouldn't normally put my front foot in to skate across there. But with these, I just throw my board on the floor, quickly click my front foot in, skate along that patch of snow, and it just speeds up all these little scenarios that you wouldn't normally do if you didn't have this functionality. So guys, thank you for watching. I know there'll be a lot of questions, some things I probably haven't covered on these bindings. So anything you wanna know, drop them down below and I will get back to you. But yeah, I can fully recommend them. Really cool, fun binding. They'll be out next winter season, probably earlier in this summer. The Nidecker Supermatics. Give them a little goosey gander. See you later.